At the top of the show, we talked about Governor Markell's approach to clean Delaware's rivers and streams. So let's pick up the conversation on State of Play. Here with me again are Stephanie Hansen, a former Newcastle County Council President, now with the law firm of Young, Conaway, Stargate and Taylor. Also here is Michael Stafford. He is an attorney and syndicated columnist whose work has been featured on MSNBC. So clean water, uh, clean water for Delaware's future is what Governor Markell is calling his uh, plan. Includes a $45 fee every year for state residents. And it comes at the same time he's proposing a 10 cent increase in the gas tax. Uh, either one of those could be a difficult sell in one year. He's trying to do both in one year. Do both get done or is it going to be one or the other? I think I think it's going to be one or the other, and whatever is passed is probably going to be pared down quite a bit. With these two big initiatives like this, particularly coming at the end of his term, I think what he really wants to do is begin the discussion. Um, and I think timing-wise, what he's done is kind of setting up the water, excuse me, the, the gas tax first and then the water second. I think that, I think the water passes. I think we get something as far as, um, as as a new fee for water because that has broader appeal, has more emotional appeal to people than the gas tax. And I think that they introduce the gas tax first so at least it would get some discussion because six weeks later we're going to start talking about the water and um, it's going to fall to the wayside. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I mean, water, who, who can be against? I mean, even except for Rick, Rich Collins, uh, who's against clean water in right. Delaware, right? I mean, there's a small constituency against that it's an issue that impacts all of us. So we all, we all live here, we all drink the water, we all know how dirty it is, and the statistics really are sobering. Um, that said, you know, when I look at, and I know how we fund transportation, and I know how other states have funded um, water improvement projects like Maryland with the flush tax for the Chesapeake Bay, but I, I do wonder sometimes if anybody in Dover remembers the benefits of progressive taxation. Because when you look at the gas tax, for example, I mean, this is a consumption tax. It's gonna hit working Delawareans uh, on the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum the hardest. When you look at the water tax, um, it's, not, it's not as bad to me as the, as the gas tax uh, because there are, the fees do increase uh, depending on your usage. Um, corporations, large, large users are gonna be paying more than your average household. And you know, at a dollar a week, it's it's not really a huge hit. Um, but again, it, it, it is the given that we have this problem, are the right people bearing enough of the weight for the cleanup? Um, and I'm not sure the answer to that is yes. The governor's been very passionate about this. I was at the press conference; he announced it, and he, you know, sounded like he was back on the campaign trail, really, you know, hammering home the need for uh, the need for clean water. And he's been just as passionate about the gas tax and the importance for for safety, for improving the state's infrastructure, as as well as jobs. Uh, and he's even said, you know, there there is no Plan B for. Uh, the, the transportation uh, work that needs to be done that, uh, you know, we'll just do less if nothing gets done. Uh, is, is it right for him to play hardball on this? Does he need to really kind of force his hand? He can. I mean, what's at stake at this point? You know, I mean, I think that he's, I think that he's pushing very hard in his last term for things that he really believes in. And there's a lot to be said for that. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, Jack, the coalition builder, I'm not, I'm not so impressed. He does tend to have a sort of take it or leave it top-down leadership style that's become increasingly apparent as we've moved through his time as, his time as governor. I, I, I do wonder if he is setting or laying the foundation and building the coalitions of interest ahead of time. Um, the, the gun bills were uh, you know, a great example of that. Um, has he laid the foundation, the groundwork, done the prep work before the announcement? Or is he coming to the folks down in the legislature with sort of fiats? This is this is the plan. This is what I want, and I'm not really going to have that discussion with you. But I mean, that said, every every legislator gets complaints about you know stormwater problems, about flooding. Um, we know you know when we talk about the water plan, it's not just drinking water. It's not just cleaning the streams for recreational use. There is a component to that where we're going to be looking at making some of the improvements that we need to do to counter sea level rise and some of the some of the threats that we are going to be looking at and we know are coming you know over in the in the near term horizon so i i think the water tax is an easier sell than the gas tax i think it's going to get passed the question is going to be is are kent and sussex county now ready to recognize that there is an issue 
and not just recognize that there's an issue, but ready to put some money towards it. Because we started having this conversation about stormwater and flooding yep. and all this at least a decade ago. I mean, I was on the task force that started this discussion, the governor's task force back in 2004 and 2005. And Kent and Sussex were not on board at that point. And that's the reason why a lot of the recommendations that were serious and now getting some play weren't being talked about a decade ago. Now the last few years of flooding and stormwater and a lot more emphasis on it, I, th I think the real question is going to be, is it, are they ready to come on board? And if they are, then we will finally now begin to see, uh, turn the corner on some, some good water legislation. Well, we've heard a, a little bit of criticism of the governor's clean water plan falling along those north-south lines. You know, the, the yeah. folks down in Sussex County not wanting to pay to clean up rivers that were polluted by Newcastle County industry and 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 there, it's sort of it, it happens on a number of issues that this divide is it, sort of a state divided. Well that's why now it's not about Sussex County cleaning up Newcastle County's problem it's about Sussex County has a flooding issue Sussex County has got some real stormwater issues are they going to recognize it now and are they ready to put some money towards fixing those things. Well and Sussex County has a nitrates issue too I mean the some of the industrial farming uses down there, the, the chicken industry in particular, but there, there are plenty of people in Sussex County who have well water, water issues, who have flooding issues, who know that they can't fish and eat, eat the fish from their lakes and their streams and their ponds. So I think it is an issue that's going to resonate with everybody. I, I, the key is to pitch the projects to the voters in Kent and Sussex and say, this is what it's going to mean for you for your lo locality. Uh, let's transition quickly uh, with a couple of uh, attorneys uh, with us on set. We have to get to a, a, a legal issue. The Supreme Court uh, weighing in uh, on uh, Delaware's sort of uh, secret arbitration and ruling against that, uh, that, that what is the sort of business impact of, of the Supreme Court decision on, on the court here? Well, I mean, for me, it, it, in terms of competition with other states, the Third Circuit has said this is, this is unlawful under the federal constitution. So we know our competitor isn't going to be PA or New Jersey because they're all in the Third Circuit too. Um, when you read the Third Circuit's opinion, it's pretty well reasoned. Uh, it, to me, it, it, it would be an impediment to other states um, attempting this. So in, in terms of a state level court in another jurisdiction competing with us for some of that corporate litigation business, um, I think this kind of puts the kibosh on that. In terms of the, the work that's being siphoned off through private arbitrations, um, obviously that's going to that's going to continue. Agree. I, I agree. I mean, private arbitrations happen all the time. I think the issue here was uh, Delaware was able to sort of put a, 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 a different stamp on it by having a sitting state judge actually issue a ruling, and there was it was binding, and so. Um, we were able to give a little bit more than our competitors had been able to do. But, you know, the opinion from the Supreme Court now, or the Third, Third Circuit actually, um, really has an elegance to it that if you're going to have a public judge sitting in doing binding arbitration, then there has to be some level of public participation, some sunshine laws, some public knowledge as to what's going on because we're in fact paying the guy's salary and there needs to be some benefit coming back so that we as a public are able to enjoy the fruits of his labor in making these decisions. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, we'll talk more next time. Guess tax increase and clean water. I'm sure we'll be in the discussion in weeks to come. Uh, Stephanie Hanson, Michael Stafford, thanks so much for being here. State of Play can be found when you click the upper right-hand box on newsworks.org slash Delaware.